So, you have a Spider-Man movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And it's gonna be all about Spider-Man. Oh, that sounds perfect. I thought you might like that. So what happens in the movie? Well, it starts with Peter Parker as a nerd in high school, and this is one of those cool high schools where everybody's 30 years old. Those are the best kind. And one day they go on a class trip to look at science stuff, right? And there are a bunch of radioactive spiders there, but one of them is missing. That can't be good. Yeah, and so Peter's gonna get bit by it, this big red and blue one. Oh my god, what does everybody say? Oh, well, he doesn't tell anyone. He keeps to himself. He gets bitten by an obviously radioactive spider and doesn't ask if he should seek medical attention. That's right. Oh, very irresponsible. And then he's gonna go home and feel real sick. So he's gonna ask for help then, right? No, he's gonna go to his room, close the door, pass out, and wake up with superpowers. Oh, that's amazing, and it's actually a really good message for kids. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, if you ever feel so sick that you might pass out, lock yourself in your room alone, and maybe you'll wake up with superpowers. That's a very good point, sir. So what powers does he develop? Oh, he gets this really cool occasion spider sense. Occasional spider sense? Yeah, well, sometimes in the script I have it not be a thing so he can get surprised by stuff. Uh, extremely unreliable superpowers. Yeah, and his main power is the ability to shoot webs. But he makes the web shooters himself, like in the comics, right? No, we're gonna have them be organic because of the spider bite. So the web fluid comes from inside him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that fluid stored inside his body? Oh, you don't want to know. What, what are you talking about? Sorry, I was just checking to see if I developed Jedi mind powers. It's stored in his balls. Oh, the balls. Okay, I got you. Anyway, so obviously Peter wants to keep his powers a secret, right? Of course. So one of the first things he does is a triple backflip in front of all the other 30-year-olds at school. Very discreet. And he's also gonna make himself a crappy costume. Yeah, well, I guess a high school kid wouldn't have any costume design skills. Right, but after Uncle Ben dies, he's gonna get really good at it out of nowhere and make this amazing-looking spider suit. Oh, well, people grieve in different ways, you know? Lots of people cry and lots of other people become very skilled at making costumes. That is very common. So who's the bad guy in this thing? Oh, it's this guy Norman Oz born and he's gonna turn into the Green Goblin. Sounds scary. Yeah, he has these bombs that turn people into skeletons. Oh man, it's gonna be tough for Spider-Man to win when the bad guy has those. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, see, Green Goblin's never gonna use those again, so it's not even gonna be an issue. Oh wow, that does make things a whole lot easier. It sure does. So anyway, Green Goblin's gonna ask Spider-Man if he wants to team up with him and be evil together. Oh, and if Spider-Man says no, he's gonna kill him? Yeah, but he's gonna be really cool about it. He's gonna be like, you know what, take your time, think about it, and if you want to be evil together, hit me up. Very considerate. Yeah, and later he's gonna hide in a fire and surprise Spider-Man like, hey, did you think about my offer? Oh, uh, surprising people in fires is tight. That's where I had my grandma's 70th birthday. In a fire? Yeah, she was so surprised. She kept on screaming and screaming. Probably because of the fire. Maybe, but mostly the surprise, I think. So what else happens in the movie? Well, Peter's in love with this girl, MJ, but she's dating his friend, Harry Osborne. Oh, bummer. Yeah, but he's gonna save her as Spider-Man and they're gonna share this romantic upside-down kid. Yes. Infidelity doesn't count if it's upside down. Exactly, so she's still a good person. Fantastic. Although she does also kiss him at Harry's dad's funeral. Oh, well, kissing at funerals is super romantic, so that's still cool. Right, good point. But I guess he doesn't say anything to her as Spider-Man, so she doesn't recognize his voice, right? Actually, not only is he gonna speak to her, but he's gonna repeat the same thing he said to her as Peter Parker 30 seconds earlier about being in the neighborhood. And she doesn't recognize him? She's not the brightest, sir. Yeah, I guess not. Anyway, so later, Green Goblin is gonna dangle a tram car full of kids on one side side of a bridge and MJ on the other. So this happens during the day? No, it happens at night. Why were there a bunch of kids in a tram car at night? They were on one of those nighttime field trips, I guess. Oh, well that's not a real thing. Whoops. Whoopsie, so who does Peter choose to save? He chooses both. Was that an option? Yes. Well, okay then. So then there's gonna be a big final fight and Green Goblin's gonna accidentally kill himself. Wow. And so yeah, what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun and I have the perfect guy in mind to play Peter Parker. Oh yeah? Yeah, this guy Tobey Maguire, he's gonna be the definitive Spider-Man. Nobody's ever gonna be able to replace Sam. Amazing. So, you have a Spider-Man sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. So at the beginning of this movie, we're gonna have this whole big thing where Peter's having a bunch of time management and money problems. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's trying to balance being Spider-Man, being a student, paying his rent, being a photographer, and being a pizza delivery guy. He's a pizza delivery guy now? Yeah, but he's gonna lose his job if he doesn't deliver a bunch of emergency pizzas in like seven minutes. If he's having such big money problems, why doesn't he try to cash in on the Spider-Man thing a little, you know? Do an event or a public appearance or 
or something. Yeah, there are probably lots of ways you could use his Spider-Man powers to make money, but it would be totally unethical to do that, you know? Doesn't he sell Spider-Man selfies to a newspaper for cash? Well, yeah, but other than that, you know, completely unethical to make money using Spider-Man powers. So how does he deliver the emergency pizzas? Using his Spider-Man powers. Oh. Yeah, and Aunt May is also having money problems, and Peter's worried about her because she's all alone and she can't pay for the house. So he moves back in with her and they pool their money together and all their problems are solved? Well, no, because Spider-Man has to be downtown to do Spider-Man stuff. Living with Aunt May didn't stop him from being Spider-Man in the first movie. Well, it would stop him now for some reason. Well, okay then. So what else happens in the movie? Oh, well, at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna have Peter choose to not confess his love to MJ because of his responsibilities as Spider-Man, even though she's clearly into him. Oh, isn't that literally how the first movie ended? Yeah, we're gonna do it again, almost immediately. Well, okay then. And then later, this guy Otto Octavius is gonna be like, Peter, you know the way to a girl's heart is through poetry, and so Peter starts to study poetry. Why? To win over Mary Jane. But you said she's clearly into him and he turned her down. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Anyway, so this Otto Octavius guy is actually pretty important. Oh, and what's his deal? Well, he's creating this mini sun reactor thing that could provide sustainable energy for the whole planet. So he has a whole crowd gathered at his place to watch him turn it on for the first time. Seems like the kind of thing you do behind closed doors for the first time. Yeah, for sure, but instead he's gonna do it in a Manhattan skyscraper with a bunch of unguarded people watching. Interesting choice. And so as part of the project, he's made these crazy robot arms that he controls with his brain. And they have a little glass inhibitor chip so they don't take over his mind. Wow, well that's a world-changing invention right there. People watching must be freaking out. They literally have no reaction to it. Huh? Anyway, so the machine doesn't work and Otto's wife dies and the inhibitor chip gets destroyed. So the robot arms take control of his mind? They do. Uh, this is gonna be some awesome Terminator stuff. What does the evil AI want to do? It wants to rebuild a machine and create sustainable energy for all mankind. Oh, that's actually pretty noble. But like in an evil way. Oh, okay. So then Doc Ock realizes he needs money to buy the parts to rebuild the machine, so he decides to steal some. If he's okay with stealing, why doesn't he just go steal the stuff? Why go through the extra step of stealing money and making transactions? I don't know. Fair enough. So then later, Peter and Aunt May are at the bank, right? And out of all the banks in New York City, Doc Ock happens to rob that very same one at that very same time. Wow, what are the odds of that? Astronomical. Oh, astronomy is tight. I know, that's why I put it in there. Amazing. So then Spider-Man and Doc Ock are gonna have this big fight and exchange punches and kicks back and forth. So I guess Doc Ock's metal arms block all the punches? No, Spider-Man lands a whole bunch of punches and kicks. But Spider-Man has super strength and Doc Ock is just a guy with robot arms. Wouldn't a single punch knock him out or incapacitate him? You'd think so, but apparently the guy can take a hit. Impressive. So then Aunt May saves the day by hitting him with an umbrella. Oh, she does? Yeah, gets him real good. Wow. So later Doc Ock needs some tritium to build the machine, so he goes to see Harry Osborn, who's the one who gave him some earlier. Oh, so Harry gives it to him? No, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some if you bring me Spider-Man alive. Why would he agree to a deal, though? He came to threaten Harry. This isn't a negotiation. Well, he's gonna agree, because Spider-Man has to be involved in the movie somehow. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man does have to be involved. So then Harry tells Doc Ock, Peter Parker can tell you where Spider-Man is. How come? Because he takes Spider-Man's picture sometimes, and that means they're super close. That is how photography works. So then Doc Ock tracks down Peter in a coffee shop with MJ. How does he find him? Unclear. Fair enough, and what does he do? Well, how did I get your attention when I walked in here? You threw a printer at the back of my head. Exactly. Throwing a heavy object at someone's head is the best way to let them know you want to talk. So what does Doc Ock throw? Well, he has super strong robot arms, so he throws a car. Whoa. Yeah, if Peter didn't have his spidey sense, he'd be dead for sure. Doc Ock got super lucky that Peter Parker is secretly a superhero. Definitely. So then Peter stops a train with the power of constipation, and Doc Ock kidnaps MJ and brings Spider-Man to Harry. Oh, so what happens next? Well, Harry takes off Spider-Man's mask, and he's like, Peter, you killed my dad in the first movie. So Peter's like, I didn't kill your dad. He tried to kill me and accidentally killed himself. No, he's like, Harry, there are bigger things happening here than me and you. Feels like that other sentence could have cleared everything up, though. Well, there's no time to say that one sentence, so he says the other one sentence instead. I guess that makes sense. So then Peter's like, Harry, you need to tell me where Doc Ock brought MJ. Does Harry even know that? No, he'd have no way of knowing, but somehow he tells him anyway. Wow. And then after a little fight, the mini sun gets too powerful, and they have to find a way to destroy it. Oh, is that gonna be hard to do? No, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, Dr. Octavius is like, I'm gonna dump it in the river, and then that immediately works. And what happens with Harry? Well, he's gonna go crazy and find his dad's old goblin stuff. Oh, what does he do with it? Well, we'll find out in the next movie. Whoa, well, hold on, we need to see if this one does well first. Maybe the success of the first one was a fluke. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, but if it does do well, we're gonna cram Spider-Man
ran down people's throats for years. Oh, fingers crossed. So, you have a Spider-Man sequel script for me? Yes sir, I do. So for this one, I really wanted to go all in on what people really loved about the first two movies. Oh yeah, a bunch of cool Spider-Man action? No, a bunch of relationship problems between Peter and MJ. Is that what people liked about the first two movies? Well, I certainly hope so, because we're gonna have a ton of crying and whining from both of them. Wow, fingers crossed. I also noticed that there weren't a lot of music or dance numbers in the first two movies, so I went ahead and jammed like four or five of them into this one to compensate. I guess it'll be fun to have some good musical numbers in there. Oh no, they're gonna be really bad. Oh, they are? Yeah, one of the story threads is actually about how bad the first musical performance was. Like, MJ's gonna get fired from her Broadway play, she was so bad. So we're jamming a bunch of bad music and dance numbers in there? Exactly. Interesting strategy. I'm sure people won't see it coming. Probably not. So one of the things that people definitely liked in the first two movies were the villains. So tell me about the villain in this one. What's his deal? Which one? Oh, you have two villains? I have three villains. Oh, laying it on real thick. Okay, tell me about the three villains. Well, we're gonna have this guy Flint Marco turn into the Sandman. Okay, okay, and what's his deal? Well, he has a sick daughter, so anytime he does something bad, it's not his fault. That's true, if you have a sick family member, you're not responsible for any of your actions. Exactly, like last week I heard my niece cough, so I went outside and stole a car. Not your fault. I know, that's what I explained to the screaming people inside the car. So how does he turn into the Sandman? Well, he escaped from prison, so as he's running from the cops, he falls inside a big science hole. Those things are all all over the place. I know, and at this one, a bunch of scientists are doing tests on some sand at 2 a.m. and not following up on the results. Wow. So yeah, he completely turns to sand, but this little locket that his daughter gave him doesn't, so he has something to look at all sad-like. Oh, she gave him a locket? Yeah, apparently she realized that having a locket with a picture of herself was a little weird, so she gave it to her dad. That is a weird thing to carry around. Anyway, so to push things further with Sandman, later Peter and Aunt May are gonna get called to the police station. What for? Well, the police are gonna be like, like, guess what? It was actually the Sandman who killed Uncle Ben, but we didn't tell you because we didn't want to upset you. So why are they telling him now? Because they want to upset them now, I guess. Oh, suddenly deciding to upset people is tight. Yeah, and this way we can rewrite Uncle Ben's death to kind of shoehorn the Sandman in there. Why would we do that, though? It doesn't add anything. So Peter can have a deep personal connection with the villain. Is that really necessary for every single villain? Yes, always, forever. Well, okay then. We're also gonna have the Venom symbiote in this movie. Oh, people love Venom. They sure do, sir, and he's gonna be in the movie for about five minutes. That's more than enough Venom, right? Oh yeah, I mean, we need to leave room for all the musical numbers. Very true. So what's the backstory of the Venom symbiote? It's gonna fall from space on a meteorite and land right next to Peter in Central Park. So what does Peter do? Well, he doesn't notice, because he's in a web hammock kissing MJ. What about his spider sense? Oh, yeah, I forgot that was a thing, so it's not gonna be a thing in this movie. Fair enough. Yeah, he's just gonna get blindsided left and right. He's not gonna see anything coming. That's okay, as long as we don't really bring up Spidey sense, I don't think people are gonna notice. Oh, well, Venom does have a line later where he's groping MJ and he's like, my Spidey sense is tingling, if you know what I mean. Oh, well, we can't cut that. That's a fantastic line. My thoughts exactly. So anyway, this symbiote is gonna turn Peter's suit black and make him kind of a jerk, but really cool. Oh, so he's like into jazz? I said he's cool. Of course he's into jazz. Just making sure. He also does a lot of finger guns and pelvic thrusts and dances in public to no music. Oh, none of that is gonna be physically painful to watch. Not in the least, he even says cool stuff like, now dig on this. Very cool. So anyway, eventually Peter's gonna get rid of the symbiote and it's gonna latch on to Eddie Brock. Oh, tell me about Eddie Brock. Well, he and Peter are fighting for the same photography job, right? Okay. And Peter discovers that Eddie faked a picture of Spider-Man. Unbelievable. So Eddie's like, come on, man, give me a break. Don't tell anyone. And Peter's like, you want forgiveness? Get religion. Oh, but he didn't ask for forgiveness. He asked for a break. Right, but there's gonna be a scene in a church later, so it's like foreshadowing. Doesn't really make sense for him to say that, though. It's a nod to something later. Yeah, but I mean, I'm a good writer. Oh, well, okay then. So what happens at the church? Well, Eddie goes there to be like, Hey, God, could you please kill Peter Parker? That is how church works. And as it turns out, at the very same time, in the very same church, Peter's in the bell tower tearing off his symbiote suit. Wow, what a wacky coincidence. Yeah, so Eddie Brock's gonna be like, Parker, and then some symbiote's gonna fall on him. And he's gonna turn into Venom. And he's gonna turn into Venom. And all he wants to do now is kill Peter Parker himself. 
belt. So he climbs up to the top of the bell tower. Oh, well, no. I just have him do a scary thing where he jumps at the camera. But isn't Peter just lying there naked at the top of the bell tower? I guess he must have woken up and swung home naked. I don't know. Fair enough. And then the other villain is Harry Osborn, and he's like the new Green Goblin. And why is he a villain? Well, he thinks that Peter killed his dad, so he wants to kill Peter. Oh, true. But towards the end of the movie, his butler's gonna be like, yo, your dad killed himself. I cleaned his wounds. I should know. Why did he wait so long to tell him? I don't know. That works for me. So then it's gonna be this big final fight of Harry and Peter versus Sandman and Venom. What are they fighting over? What do you think? Mary Jane got kidnapped? Mary Jane got kidnapped. I love that we always do that. It's just as exciting each time. Man, so it must have been tough to juggle all these villains in the same script. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, throughout the script, I just had things happen to them that made them take little breaks from the movie. What do you mean? Well, like Harry bumps his head and forgets everything for a while. Oh, amnesia is always a great storytelling device. And then Sandman gets flushed down a sewer for a bit. Wow, and what about Venom? Oh, well, I just make the symbiote hang out in Peter's apartment doing nothing until I want it in the movie. It just hangs out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just hitches a ride on Peter's scooter from Central Park and chills out. That's a very patient symbiote. So what do you think? Do you think all these story threads are gonna work? I think it's gonna work very well. Very well. So, you have a Spider-Man reboot for me. Yes, sir, I do. It's gonna be called The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yes. So what's the movie about? Well, it's like a Spider-Man origin movie with some extra origin thrown in there. What do you mean? We're gonna have this whole thing about Peter's parents disappearing and him trying to figure out what happened to them. Oh, is that something that people are interested in seeing? I hope so, because we're gonna lean into it pretty hard. So what happens with that storyline? Well, Peter finds some secret papers in his dad's old briefcase, and that leads him to going to this high-tech company, Oscorp, because he wants to figure out what the heck happened. Is it gonna be hard for him to get into a high-tech company like Oscorp? No, it's gonna be super easy barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, there just so happens to be an internship thing going on, so he steals someone's identity and sneaks in. He steals someone's identity? Yeah, and then the guy whose identity he stole is gonna get dragged out by security? It's gonna be hilarious. Doesn't that make Peter Parker seem like kind of a jerk? No, it's gonna be charming, because at the beginning of the movie, Peter's gonna help out a kid that's being bullied. Oh, so we're just gonna assume that everything he does past that point is gonna be likable? Yeah, we're gonna have him be a good guy in that one scene and then coast along on that, hoping that people empathize with him. Ooh, let's hope that works. Yeah, fingers crossed. So what happens at Oscorp? Well, he's gonna keep being a jerk by breaking into a secure room in the lab. Very charming. And that room's full of spiders, so one of them's gonna bite him. And that leads to him getting his powers. Exactly. So then he wakes up in the subway and discovers his new abilities. Oh, awesome. I love scenes when heroes discover they have powers. So how does it happen? Well, he's gonna undress a woman without her consent. You know, just rip her shirt off. What? Yeah, and then some guys are gonna jump in to defend the woman, cause you know, that's sexual assault, and then Peter's gonna beat up her defenders. Wait, are you doing like a dark reboot of Spider-Man where he's the villain or something? No, he's a good guy. Remember he saved that one kid from the bully? Oh, right, right, right. He's likable. So, and what happens with his investigation into his parents' disappearance? Oh, well, we're pretty much gonna abandon that storyline. What do you mean? How's it resolved? We just don't bring it up again. I don't know. We're just ditching the character's whole initial motivation. Yeah, we're gonna shift the focus to Peter trying to figure out who killed Uncle Ben. Oh, Uncle Ben is in this movie. Yeah, of course. So we're gonna have that whole with great power comes great responsibility line. Yeah, well, I didn't want to use that same line, so I found a way for him to convey the same message in a way that's just as smooth. Oh, how does he say it? He's like, your father lived by a philosophy, a principle, really. He believed that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. That is just as catchy as with great power comes great responsibility. If not more catchy, it just rolls off the tongue. Agreed. Anyway, so later a guy robs a store and as he's running away, he drops his gun in front of Uncle Ben. Oh, so Uncle Ben gets out of the way? No, he tries to grab the gun. Was the guy gonna shoot someone nearby or something? No, he was just running away. So why would Uncle Ben do something dangerous like that? Because he needs to die. Well, okay then. So then Peter's gonna rampage around the city trying to find his killer. Oh, does he end up finding him? I don't know. That's another storyline that we're gonna abandon. Oh, we are? Yeah, I really enjoy starting story threads, but I find it's tough to end them, so sometimes I just don't do it. Fair enough. Writing's hard. I also have this antagonist, Rajit, who's just gonna disappear from the movie completely at a certain point, never to be heard of again. Well, so what else should I know about the movie? Well, you know how Spider-Man's secret identity is super important? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, not to this version of Spider-Man. Oh, what do you mean? Well, he spends most of his time as Spider-Man without his mask on. He also does a bunch of superhuman 
Spider-Man stuff at school. He straight up tells Gwen Stacy that he's Spider-Man. He also uses a camera as Spider-Man that says property of Peter Parker right on the back. Wow, does anyone not know that he's Spider-Man? Probably not, to be honest. Huh, yeah, he's the worst. So tell me more about the bad guy. Oh, well, his name is Dr. Connors, and he's missing an arm, so he wants to find a way to grow it back. Okay. But then he ends up turning himself into a giant evil lizard. Oh, sounds pretty scary. So what's his evil plan? He wants to turn the whole city into lizards. What? Why? Because he really likes lizards. He thinks everyone should be lizards. Well, okay, so everybody would permanently be lizard people? Well, I guess it wouldn't be permanent, because he has to keep injecting himself to turn into one. So his plan is to turn everyone into lizards for a little bit? Yeah, 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 pretty evil, right? I guess that's not very nice. Yeah, it's super sneaky, mildly an inconvenience. Yeah, sounds like it. And he's even gonna turn this group of cops into lizards. Oh wow, what kind of stuff are they gonna do while they're lizards? I don't know, we're gonna show them turning into lizards and then only come back to them when they turn back into humans. Keeping it mysterious, that's kinda cool. Yeah, and then the lizard is gonna kill Gwen Stacy's father. Oh no. And his dying wish to Peter is that he stay away from his daughter to keep her safe. Wow. So Peter's like, I'm sorry Gwen, I can't be with you anymore. Well, I mean, obviously he's gonna respect the wish of a dying man. Of course for about five minutes. Then he's like, screw that guy. Oh, immediately betraying someone's dying wish is tight. Yes, sir, it is. So what do you think? Hey man, as long as we keep the rights to Spider-Man out of Disney's hands, I'm happy. Great. So you have an amazing Spider-Man sequel script for me? Yes sir, I do. And for this one, I really took a look at how people reacted to Spider-Man 3 to learn what not to do in a Spider-Man sequel. That is smart, because people did not like that movie. Exactly. And one of the things that people really hated is that a bunch of time was spent on relationship problems between Peter and MJ. Very true. So instead, what I did was spend a bunch of time on relationship problems between Peter and Gwen Stacy. That's a completely different person. People are gonna appreciate that. Yeah, and instead of being kidnapped and put into dangerous situations like MJ was, Gwen Stacy just straight up runs into them herself. Empowering. And dies. Oh my god. But before she dies, Peter's gonna be like, I stalked you every single day while we were broken up. Oh, stalking a woman is a super romantic gesture. Yeah, unless you're ugly, then it's horrifying. Thank god Peter isn't ugly or Gwen would have been pissed. Yeah. So what other Spider-Man 3 lessons did you apply to the script? Oh, well, another thing that people really didn't like about that movie was the inclusion of the three villains. Right, there was Venom, Sandman, and Green Goblin. Exactly, so I made sure not to make that mistake again. Fantastic, so how many villains are there in this one? Still three, but they're different ones. Oh, so it wasn't that there was too many villains crammed in, it was that they weren't the right ones? Right, so I completely switched it up and went with Rhino, Electro, and Green Goblin. Oh, well, Green Goblin was in Spider-Man 3 as well. Whoops. Whoopsie. So tell me about Rhino, what's his backstory? Doesn't matter. Fair enough. What about Electro? Oh, well, he's gonna become super obsessed with Spider-Man after Spider-Man saves him and reads his name tag. Okay. And later he's gonna get Electro electrocuted and get bitten by a bunch of electric eels. Oh, and that gives him electric powers? You bet it does, and obviously it also, you know, fixes the gap between his teeth. What? Yeah, he's gonna be in a tank full of eels and you're just gonna see his teeth get closer together because of the electricity. Why would that happen though? Well, what are the first things that come to mind when you think of electricity? Uh, I guess lightning bolts, eels. Right, and also dental work. I'll be honest, if I had to list 5,000 things relating to electricity, I don't think dental work would even make that list. Well, then how do you suggest we fix the gap in this guy's teeth? He could just not have a gap in his teeth or continue to have a gap in his teeth? Oh, you sound insane right now. Wait, does the gap in his teeth factor into the plot or something? No. Okay, you know what, whatever, let's just move on. So anyway, later he's gonna be in Times Square absorbing a bunch of electricity and something's gonna happen that's really gonna turn him into a villain. Oh, what happens? Well, Spider-Man doesn't immediately remember his name and then he gets jealous when all the screens switch from video of him to video of Spider-Man. That's it. Yeah, and also he has voices in his head now or something. We're not really gonna get into it, but he's evil now. That's all you need to know. Well, okay then. So tell me about Green Goblin. Is it gonna be Norman Osborn or his son Harry? Well, it's gonna be Harry but his dad is gonna be in the movie a bit. Oh yeah? Yeah, Norman's gonna be on his deathbed like, son, I never imagined dying this way. What way? Well, he explains to Harry that he had this super rare disease that only affects Osborns for some reason. Oh no. Yeah, and also that it started to affect him when he was Harry's age, so he's probably gonna get sick too. I thought he said he never imagined dying this way, but he's been dying this way for 40 years. That's right. Wow, dude's not very good at putting two and two together. I guess not. So anyway, then Norman's gonna die and Peter's gonna come visit Harry. How come? Well, he's gonna be like, hey, old 
old friend, remember how we were childhood best friends? Wait, Peter was best friends with Harry Osborn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But pretty much the entire first movie had to do with Oscorp stuff, and we never once mentioned he had a personal relationship with Harry Osborn. I guess he forgot about it. Wow, what a horrible memory. So then Harry decides that he needs Spider-Man's blood to cure himself, so he's like, Peter, you took his picture, you must know Spider-Man. Taking somebody's picture doesn't automatically mean you know them. Well, listen, I need to move the plot forward, so not everything's gonna make sense. Feels like you should have stuff make sense. Feels like you should have stuff make sense. That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So we good? I don't know anymore. Perfect. So Peter's gonna be like, let's just give this some time, and Harry's gonna be like, I don't have time. Doesn't he have like 40 years before he dies? Well, I want there to be a sense of urgency here, so we're gonna pretend like it's urgent. If you say so. And what else happens in the movie? We're gonna have Aunt May become a nurse. Oh, where is that story thread gonna go? Nowhere. Wow, well, good for her, I guess. Yeah, it's not easy to become a nurse. I'm really proud of her. It'd be pretty cool if it factored into the story in a meaningful way. Yeah, but it's not gonna, though. Oh, well, so what else should I know about the movie? Well, people really liked when Spider-Man cracked jokes in the first movie, so in this one, he's gonna prioritize jokes over human life. Oh, he is? Yeah, like he's gonna have an opportunity to stop Rhino, but instead he's gonna crack some jokes and let him continue his rampage for another five minutes. Very irresponsible. And when Electro is going crazy in Times Square, Spider-Man's gonna take the time to put on a fireman hat, even though people are about to die. Oh, playing dress up during life and death situations is tight. It's also extra dangerous, because for some reason, every time there's a major crime in New York, everyone forms a crowd to watch. Wow, the people of New York have no sense of self-preservation. We're also gonna have a big story thread where Peter discovers that his father mixed his own DNA in with the Oscorp spiders. And only somebody from his own bloodline could ever get superpowers from them. Really overcomplicating his origin story, huh? Oh, wait till you hear how Peter discovers it. Do tell. He's gonna break his dad's old calculator and find some subway tokens in there. Then he's gonna go to an abandoned subway station and put them in a coin thingy, and then a secret train's gonna come out of the ground, and in that train, there's gonna be a message from his dad. Wow, that is a super complicated way of relaying information. Right, could've just left him a note. So how does the movie end? Well, Green Goblin's gonna team up with Electro, cause they both hate Spider-Man. Okay. And Electro has these shorts on that came out of nowhere. He just suddenly has shorts on? How's that possible? Do you wanna see a lightning penis? No, I don't. Yeah, me neither. So he has some shorts on now. Yeah, okay, good call. So then they're gonna have a big final fight against Spider-Man. Is it gonna be hard for Peter to take on Green Goblin and Electro? No, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, Green Goblin is only gonna attack after Electro is dead. They're gonna take turns attacking Spider-Man? Right. I thought the whole thing was that they were gonna team up. Yeah, they're gonna team up. Individually, one after the other. Pretty awful strategy, but okay. And then we're gonna have Harry Osborn in prison, and we're gonna tease his plan for the Sinister Six. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, and he's gonna arrange to break Rhino out of prison and give him a Rhino outfit. What's that gonna accomplish? Oh, something, I suppose. Wow. And then Spider-Man's gonna swing a manhole cover at him, and we're gonna cut to the credits. Oh, we're not gonna show how that fight ends? Maybe we'll show it at the beginning of the third movie. Well, assuming people enjoy this one. Hey, if Tobey Maguire got three Spider-Man movies, Andrew Garfield's getting at least three. Yeah, you're probably right. So, you have a third Spider-Man movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So I was thinking in this next one, we could have Peter Parker's whole emotional story revolve around Tony Stark. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, so he's gonna be on the run from all the, the... Hi there, hello. Who are you? Yeah, can I, can I help you? I'm the studio guy from Sony. I came to talk to you about that offer you made us for a new Spider-Man arrangement. Oh yeah, have you read that? I feel like it's a really good new arrangement. I'm gonna make a ton of money this way. Yeah, but see, I kinda like the version where I make more money money. But I like money. That's my whole thing. Ah, well see, therein lies the problem. That is also my thing. Uh-oh, that's not good. Well, I'm sure there's more than enough money to go around. Yeah, that's true. So there's really no need to argue as long as I get most of the money going around. Ah, uh, see, therein lies the problem. I would like most of that money. You are relentless. Oh, I feel like I'm watching my parents fight or something. Oh, your parents are tight. What? So listen, Sony guy, I guess we can compromise and you just give me everything I asked for. Uh, that is one way. Or we can compromise and just keep things the way they are. Uh, it doesn't sound like I'd get more money out of that situation. No, I would. Listen, you don't even know how to make a Spider-Man movie anymore, but when we do it, we make over a billion dollars. I mean, we made Spider-Verse. That was like a masterpiece. That was pretty
pretty good. Pretty good movie. And we made Venom, which was, you know, just as good. Well, well. Well, so then it's settled. I will make all the money and own all the things. That's not, no, no, I don't agree with that. I mean, just let us own Spider-Man. We own everything. You're being weird. You're being weird. I'm taking Spider-Man and I'm leaving. What? What? Yep, I'm leaving. You can't use him in the MCU anymore. Well, can I still use him if he just goes by Night Monkey from now on? No. Oh, dang it. Also, I'm taking Screenwriter Guy with me. Oh, my God. What, what, you can't do that. Yeah, he's coming with me. Well, this is just the worst day ever. Well, I guess I'd better go then. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna miss you, man. <sighs> Loving you was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, my God, love? Oh, did I completely misread our entire relationship? It certainly seems that way. This was always strictly professional. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. All right, we gotta go. We got some work to do. Okay, bye. Bye-bye now. So, you have a Spider-Man movie for me? Yes, new sir, I do. But was it really necessary to take a plane down the street? I don't know. Fair enough. So tell me about your ideas for Spider-Man moving forward. Well, I thought we could start the new movie off with Peter on the run and he meets up with Nick Fury. Well, we can't use Nick Fury. He's in the MCU. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, well, well, Peter modifies his Stark suit. And... Can't have a Stark suit. That's MCU. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so Aunt May and Happy are together. And... Can't have Happy. Well, that actually sums up my feelings pretty accurately. Tell you what we do. We go back a couple years, we meet Uncle Ben. Uh-oh. And then we kill that son of a gun. We kill him. Right. We kill him dead, and then we have, uh, I don't know, Green Goblin show up. Yeah, I don't know if people want to see all that again. Yeah, people love when that old dude gets shot. I mean, okay. Oh. 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 What's, what's, what's that? What's going on? Well, I think the news of this arrangement just broke. Twitter is going nuts. Uh, they're happy that Spidey's out of the MCU, huh? Uh, you know, not exactly, no. What are you talking about? Oh, oh my god. Yeah. I, uh, I need to make some calls.